Okay, welcome to another Wednesday weekly team prosperity meeting. Once again, this is a weekly meeting that goes right into things that will help you coming out of this meeting, build your business, whether you're in the you know, beginning stages, whether you're in the growth stages, distribution, scaling stages, no matter where you're at with your business, um, this is things that can help you, like I said, grow and scale your business. Right now, you have an unbelievable opportunity because there's a lot of like macroeconomic forces in play. There's microeconomic forces in play. There's industry forces at play. There's a lot going on right now. So whereas outside people see this, you know, what's going on is kind of chaotic right now. We understand and we know that in chaos, there's opportunity. And opportunity means revenue, income, the opp opportunity to go out and help a lot of different people. So understand that as these forces come up and this energy is being um, you know, laid out over many different types of industries, you have an unbelievable opportunity to capitalize on this. Before we get into today's training, I just want to go through a couple of things that have come up. You know, Most people are unhappy. The reason they're unhappy is because they constantly feed themselves the excuses. And excuses are seldom truthful, often handy, rarely productive. Don't make excuses, make things happen. So as you're going through your days, you're going to have good days, bad days, really good days, really bad days. We teach you, keep an even keel. Don't let yourself get into the habit of accepting excuses, uh, quitting and starting stuff over again, because your brain loves repetition. Whether you set it on a good path or a negative path, it's going to want to go and completely just stay on that path, train your brain to do good things. Also, something else that came up this week, you have to understand if you can't promote your biz to everyone you know, then you really don't believe in it and neither will anyone else. So you have to understand that when you go through day to day, you're talking about you know, who you are, you know, what you're doing, why, how you help other people. If you can't constantly promote yourself, promote your business, you just don't believe in it. And like this says, if you don't believe in it, neither will anyone else. Something else that came up this week that we have to understand is that, you know, our business model is changing, you know, and it's changed over the last number of years. We were on the forefront of that change, but we have to understand that office relocation, you know, when we take it into a virtual world, there are savings on the expense side. You're talking about no rent for offices, no uh, big dry cleaning bills, you know, the gasoline charges, the dry cleaning charges, all of this. We don't have to absorb, but you can't just say, okay, I don't have any expenses for our business. You have to be disciplined and understand that that money that you're spending or that you're saving in a virtual world, it needs to be transferred over to things like digital marketing strategies, lead generation, automation. Things are going to help your business be more efficient and grow faster uh, for yourself, your partners, and your clients. And then one of the other things that I want to talk about before we get into the uh, training today is that entrepreneurship is not a job title. It's a lifestyle. So changing your life is always possible. We have a lot of people coming in trying to make that bridge over for like an employee to an entrepreneur. You know, an entrepreneur is a lifestyle. Entrepreneurship is a lifestyle. So your new life is going to cost you your old one. Being an entrepreneur means that you are constantly thinking about how to make your business better. And one of those things is that you know, as we head into the holidays over the next few months, or Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, during this off time when there's not direct business activity going, you know, entrepreneurs, or at least the ones that are looking to get ahead, are constantly trying to better themselves. Online education, reading, preparing, reflecting. This is all an important part of being an entrepreneur. It's not just about the direct activity into your business. It's about the mindset and the mentality of always thinking about your business and understanding that you can make it better. And if you don't make it better, there are other people out there that are willing to make their business better. It's a competitive world. Um, you want to you know, stand apart. You want to create innovation, bring that to the marketplace. But you're ultimately competing here and you want to come out on top. All right. Last week, we talked about being the obvious solution. Be the obvious solution. There are solutions to your prospects and clients' problems. Then there are obvious solutions to their problems. You need to position yourself in a way that helps them understand you are the obvious solution. And that solution starts today, right here, right now, helping them remove obstacles currently preventing them from reaching their goal. So once again, when you position yourself that you are the solution versus one of many different types of solutions, it's a different conversation. So understand you know, how to position yourself and how to make sure people understand 
that you're the right person to talk to, establish your authority, and be the obvious solution. So this week, like I said, we're talking about sinking or swimming. So at some point, like when you're a kid and you're at the pool, you just jump in, right? You want to learn how to swim. Same thing with your business. Don't just walk around your business continuously looking at it, jump in. And then when you jump in, you're going to seek or swim. And one of the things we're going to be talking about today is how to organize your thought patterns and your activities around making sure that you can swim in this environment. You have to try something, whether it's lead generation, marketing, prospecting, education, sales tactics, whatever it is for 100 or for 90 to 120 days. If you're unwilling to go through the process to make sure that you're making data driven decisions to make sure that, hey, after this period of time, I'm looking back and I'm reflecting on the data. This is not working for me or this is working anytime up before that and anytime that you're making decisions without data. They're emotional decisions. Emotional decisions will get you in trouble in your professional and your personal life. So give things a chance to have you make a chance to, uh, you know, make a decision that's going to be a data-driven decision for your business. Remember that 90 to 120 days is not thinking about, not planning, not preparing. That's not part of the 90 to 120 days. That's the activity part. That's putting you know, the, the, the pedal down and that's doing what you need to do to make a decision about whether or not this is working. So if you're just constantly in that planning, preparing, thinking about, you know, that's just procrastination. You need to act. And then from that act, action, you'll be able to tell, you know, is this working? Is this not working? And then, like I said, being able to make data-driven decisions for your business. And then part of you know, being successful is understand what a communication plan is. You know, your communication plan is an end-to-end -end plan for delivering strategic messages to your key audiences in order to drive positive business outcomes. Your communication plan is so important because what that essentially does, it takes your prospect through the process. On your side, you're able to qualify, disqualify the things we're talking about. But from the client or the prospect's perspective, that communications uh, plan and everything that we do through our um, funnels, through our campaigns, through our communication is designed to take them through a process, create awareness, create interest, create a decision and action point, action steps. Continuously taking people through this factory like pipeline uh, makes this very easy. And it also makes this um, something that you can pass on because if you're going to build agencies and you're doing something that you can't pass on or you can't explain, in a clear, concise, articulate way, uh, good luck with the distribution side. You have to have something that can be you know, replicated and duplicated. In your warm market, we talked about this. Hey, if you're unwilling to promote your business to people that you know and meet, then you, know, you don't believe in it. And if you don't believe in it, neither will anybody else. So what you have to understand is in your warm market, these are people that you have either deep connections with, loose affiliations, whatever it might be, uh, your warm market, you need to approach that from a mission-based uh, standpoint. This is what I'm doing. This is why I'm doing it. I would really uh, you know, appreciate your feedback, your reflection. If you could go through this, if you could look at this, give me your honest opinion. That's what you want. You want help from your warm market because the way that we've designed our process, it's non-threatening on the front side, free guides, free education. So inside that front education, even if somebody's just doing you a favor to help you, there's nothing to buy nothing to subscribe to. So understand that you're not tricking somebody into appointment. You're, you know, you're genuinely wanting to know, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is where I'm at. This is what I need help with. I would appreciate your feedback. And just from that approach, they're going to get introduced to, like I said, what we do, what you do, how we help other people. And this is not trying to find a needle in a haystack. If you get in front of people with the right type of communication, business is going to flow. And then outside the warm market, you just have those lead magnets. We have a very defined, you know, kind of marketing strategy in place that attracts people from social media, common market, cold market, and all of this attraction is going to develop lead generation. And then our job from that lead generation is just to sort people, make sure that, you know, we disqualify so we're not wasting their time or our time. And the ones that are qualified, we're spending time with them to make sure they understand I'm the right person to talk to. I can help you with that and we're the right uh, products and services on the back end to help you get it done. 
Also, you have to understand that you are a brand. Your product or your service is not a brand. The company that you represent is not a brand. You are the brand. So part of your communication strategy and part of the process of making sure you're successful is constantly working on your brand. You have a focus. Be genuine. Tell a story. Be consistent. Uh, be genuine, which is ready and willing to fail. You know, Authentic in the marketplace. Create positive impacts. Follow successful examples. Learn from people that are doing it correctly. Live your brand, let other people help tell your story and have fun. So understand the products and the services that we have and the education that we have is all packaged up in a nice deal. But above that, you're the brand. People buy into you before they buy into what you're trying to sell them. Your lead magnets, your contacts, whether those are turning into business partners or clients, those all come from your networking, your marketing, your prospecting, your lead generation, those contacts that you're constantly you know, creating and, and, and communicating with, they're like bricks for building what you want. So understand, if you're bringing very little bricks to uh, the work site, not much is gonna get built. If you're bringing pallets of bricks to the work site, you know, we're going to be able to build buildings, houses, whatever it is that you're trying uh, to build. As an entrepreneur, one of the things that you have to understand is you can't dwell in problems. You can't dwell in your problems, your clients' problems, your partner's problems. You have to live on the solution side. Yes, when you're dealing with clients, you have to dig in and help them understand that that problem that they're having, um, you know, don't just gloss over it. Make sure they understand it's a problem now. It's going to be a bigger problem going forward but you have to live on the solution side of this equation. You need to be solutions-based and you need to do that, like I said, for yourself, your partners, your clients, uh, and the overall marketing strategy that you bring to your business. And you need to be systematic. Like I said, if you're gonna build something and no one else can follow your lead or do what you do, well, you're on your own. If you wanna go fast, go alone. You wanna go far, build a team. If you're gonna build a team, you're gonna build distribution and you're gonna scale this thing, you have to be systematic. You have to have something that somebody else can take on and say, oh, I understand what you're doing. I can do this as well. Also, you need to understand that you need to have courage in the marketplace. Remember, when you're out there marketing, not everybody's going to be receptive to your message. Not everybody's going to be receptive to your brand. To make big money and to get past all this, you need to have courage. You know, big impacts require courage. And the way that you're going to get your courage, one of the best ways that you're going to get your courage for this type of business is to understand that you're growing on purpose. This isn't about putting, you know, X amount of money in your bank account. You're going to get paid for the work that you do. Yes. But this is about the mission and mission driven companies. The mission directly impacts the quality of the product. Remember, trying to change the financial landscape of this country, individual by individual or family by family. When you get behind the mission, it becomes easier to get courageous because now it's not about you. It's about what you can do um, for other people. To inspire others, you got to be excited. Remember, if your business model you know, is one that can help a lot of people and your products and services can benefit a lot of people, well, then you have to be excited every day. You have to create excitement about your business. It doesn't have to be the same thing every day or the same thing every week, but you got to find things to be excited about because like I said, your brand and the way that you come into the marketplace and talk to people, that's that first impression. If you're not excited about your business, it's going to be hard to transfer uh, excitement to other people when you have a lack of excitement. So understand, you know, marketing, sales, transfer of emotion, right? Be excited about your business. Be excited about what you can do for other people. You know, what we teach people is the human condition is one that where you're in control. You make decisions, there's consequences of the decisions. So part of what we do in understanding as a partner and as a client for the people that we talk to, they're in control. So part of what we do for ourselves is outline, hey, what am I looking to get out of this business over X period of time? Same thing with your other partners and clients. We need to know, hey, what do they want? Because once you know what you want or somebody else wants, it's easy to create an outline, like a checklist of things that, hey, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want to avoid that. When you've got your outline and your checklist, kind of like your wish list of things you want to get to or avoid, then we can set out the requirements to get that done. And basically what the requirements mean is, hey, it's time for results. This is where you are now. This is where you're trying to get to. This is how you're going to get there. It's time to make a decision. It's time to start you know, making steps and progress towards the results. Once you understand that, it's easy to just go through that 
you know, um, you know, equation basically and create velocity for your business. Once you understand your business and once you understand how to create revenue and income, and once you get behind the mission of your business, the only other thing that you need to do is make it as efficient as possible and bring velocity or speed to the build out. Part of that learning curve and part of that velocity and the, and the speed of your build out of your business, whether that's a book or a portfolio of digital agencies, is you have to learn, you have to teach other people. You got to get on the phone. All of these digital tools that we have these days, they're great, but you know, 40 years ago, they didn't have all this. How was business done 40 years ago? It was done on the phone. Your phone is one of the most important assets that you have. If you're using it every day, it becomes easier, it becomes a habit. If you're not using it every day, it feels very heavy to pick up that, what seemingly should be a very light cell phone. So understand, create good habits for yourself. But a lot of the learning curve, a lot of the talking points, a lot of the rebuttals for the objections is all going to come from just having enough conversations. Once you get those repetitions in, it's very easy to talk about this business with any partner, potential partner, potential client, any prospect, because you know what you're talking about and you've had enough of those reps where you feel comfortable. And then it's all about just mastering the art of execution. So wherever your business is, if you're a marketer, you master the art of execution in that role. If you're an educator, you know, master that. If you're into managing and building agencies, you have to master that. So understand you don't have to master the art of execution for every part or department or role of your business, but you start with what you're concentrating on, concentrating on right now. What is your role and how do you master that role so as you move forward, you can teach other people and you can grow into your business. When you get to the point, if you're going to be an educator, um, if you're going to do the sales, then it doesn't matter on the front line, like what everything streamed down to. You have to nail your presentation. This is the most important part of what we do. If you're working with a marketer and they've done their job to create a lead, you have to come in with your A game. This could be the thousandth time you've done this presentation. It's the first time that other person has seen it. So no matter how your day is going, how many of these you've done in a day, a week, or a month, it's the first time. You've got to come in, bring excitement, bring your A game, and do what's necessary to create something where that marketer feels confident passing that lead off to you. And then once you do that, it's just mentoring other people. Remember, if you're going to build agencies, then you're going to need other people. And other people come from the ability to prospect, you know, market, create lead generation, having something that's replicatable, they can follow. But at the end of the day, when you've mastered these roles, it's just about teaching other people. So you learn it yourself, you master it yourself, and you teach other people. And that's how we build nationwide distribution of these products and services. Working with virtual sales teams is both something that has pros and cons. So you need to understand the advantages and the disadvantages of working with virtual teams and really, you know, Take those strengths or those um, advantages and run with them, but also understand the other side, the weaknesses that are the disadvantages and kind of make sure you plug those holes. One of those is the fact that we're not in a physical location. We're not seeing everybody every day. So one of the things you need to understand is you got to contact your team. You got to stay in front of them. Make sure they know they're not on a desert island by themselves, that even though we're in separate locations around the country, we're all joined by online infrastructure, meetings. Uh, the ability to communicate, whatever it is, you don't want a new partner feeling like they're on their own. Mentoring and working with virtual teams, uh, really, it's a four-step process because I call it the four levels of understanding. I understand what you did. I can repeat what you did in a similar situation. I can explain it to others so that they understand. I can apply it to different situations. It's about learning it on your own, teaching other people and ultimately bringing everybody to the point where they can, in any given situation, read that situation. Remember, once we've got all the, you know, the details down, the facts down, the, the movement of our marketing and everything down, the only thing you've got to do is understand how to read situations, get the right information from the other party. And then from that information, you know, it uncovers problems and things that we talked about where we can offer solutions and action steps. On the other side, when you read situations, you're able to disqualify somebody two minutes into a conversation versus taking them through the whole process, setting them up with an educator and having the educator disqualify them. Reading situations is so important to become more efficient and make sure that the time investment you put into your business or any individual, whether it's a partner or a client, has a, has a return for you. 
remember, you know, you got to focus on being productive instead of busy. We can do a lot of things all day long and get no return on that, really. So you've got to understand productive. You know, what do I have in store aligned up for income producing activities for this day, this week, this month? And then you have to learn how to value different parts of your business. You know, in the beginning, we value leads too much because we don't have enough of them. But you have to understand your business model, there's different points and there's different value points for a lead, a client, a partner, a partner with activity, a partner that's part of your core branch or group and partner with distribution legs. So understand where you're at in the business model, who you're talking to, what value they either bring to you now or potentially bring to you and organize your thought patterns and your communication around that value. Remember, everybody doesn't start at the top. And this is something that, you know, if somebody's unwilling to work through things to get to a point where they're successful and they have the, you know, return on revenue and uh, income they were looking for, it starts to a point where we all start from the same exact point, which is nothing. We come in and we build this business from the ground floor. But understand that other people do that in other industries, including sports. Look, $1,250 monthly salary of a minor leaguer, that's nothing, guys. That's poverty for a minimum salary in the Major League Baseball. This might be a couple of years old. I'm not sure. $500,000. It's probably more than that right now. There is a big difference between making $1,250 a month and making half a million dollars a year. You know, in the minor leagues, you've got to prove yourself to get called up to the major league. Same thing here. When you're working your business, understand you're actually coming in at kind of a minor league level. You got to build yourself up to get to the major leagues. In that process, you can't skip. There's steps to the process that you can't skip. And having that discomfort in your life is a huge advantage because the problem with people who have, you know, there's no process. Like, like let's say they win the lottery. Problem is there was no journey or process to getting that money. So a lot of times what you see is when they win that lottery, you know, X amount of years later, they're completely broke. Their life is in shambles and they wish they had never won in the first place. That's because there was no journey to that money. So it's a process, trust the process, hold the vision. And you need to get out of your comfort zone. Like I said, jumping in the deep end, learning how to swim, getting out of your comfort zone, waking up the sleeping giant in you. If you understand what we're doing and you understand the, the positive ripple effect that you can create for yourself, your partners, your clients, everything we do and your mission based, you get obsessed by helping other people. That's going to help you get out of your comfort zone, because now, like we talked about earlier, it's not just about you. It's about the mission. Check the scoreboard, guys. You have to understand that, you know, if you're working hard, the numbers have to start piling up. You have to check the scoreboard. And if you're working hard, you're doing what we tell you to do and the numbers don't start to add up on the scoreboard, there's a problem. We need to talk about that to alleviate, you know, whatever problems or kinks in the line to get you A to Z more efficiently. And you got to get the reps out there, guys. The reps come from the phone, the email, you know, the social media messages, everything that you do, just like we talked about the learning curve on the phone. If you're not getting enough reps per day, then that learning curve, like let's say that just you know, just random numbers. Let's say that you needed to make 100 phone calls to get through the learning curve and you make one phone call a day. Well, it's 100 days, the learning curve. What if you make 50 phone calls a day? That's two days. So understand you're in charge, you're in control. You're going to map this out and it's going to take however long or however, uh, you know, you'll get to that point however quick or however long, depending on what you're willing to do on a daily basis. And that means putting the reps into your business. Leads turn into sales. Without leads, there are no sales. So understand that if you're, you're not putting numbers on the board and you're trying to dissect what's going on, you're creating little to no lead generation, that is the problem. You need to find a solution for that problem and then deal with the next problem when it comes on. But you can't look at something down your business model and say, oh, that's the problem when you're creating no leads. You know, our lead generation is our lifeblood of this business and most everybody else's business, it's all about, you know, marketing to sales, you know, creating value-based propositions on the front side, creating lead generation, sorting those leads into appropriate places, working with the people that, you know, that we can help, that want to help themselves and that you work best with. And you need to also understand, guys, as you go forward, there are you know, when we make data-driven decisions over emotional ones, that's the first step. And then when you start making data-driven decisions, you can make your business much more efficient. You can do little things 
that have huge back end ripple effects. So look at this, 1% overall close rate. Well, what do you need to do to get four closes? Well, you start with 400 marketing messages and you get the interactions, the first appointments, the discoveries, the proposals. So if you need to close four deals and you have a 1% close rate, you need to get 400 leads to get to your goal. Well, also understanding that as you go through that process, that lifts in conversion can equal you know, greater increases in sales. So look at this, if you have a thousand visitors, if you have a 10% conversion rate, that's hundred prospects, 10 leads, one sale. Well, what about if you can get a 10% lift to a 20% conversion rate? Look at what this does, same thousand visitors, now you have 200 prospects, 40 leads, and eight sales. So understand, in this example, that 10% lift in conversion equals an 800% increase in sales. So once you understand your business, you understand your numbers, you can fix things. And small fixes on the front side can have huge ripple effects on the back side. So your intention every single day, like I said, you've got to bring intention, you've got to bring action, you've got to have targets or objectives, and you've got to bring excitement about your business. You're either going to step forward into growth or step backward into safety. We know what the comfort zone looks like. There's no growth there. So intention plus action, a lot of magic that can happen there. If you want to know what your business is going to look like in 6, 9, 12, 18 months, then we don't need a crystal ball. We just have to look backwards. What did you do yesterday? What are you going to do today? What did you do last week? Remember, those indicators are going to show what's possible or not possible in the future. So what are you doing right now coming out of this meeting that's going to help build your business to the point that you want to get it to over the next 18, 24 months? Failure happens, guys. And if you're going to go into a business and if you're going to become an entrepreneur, part of being an entrepreneur is just solving problems every day. It's also understanding that failure happens. You expect it, you embrace it, you excel beyond it. And we understand that th those failures are learning opportunities to get better at what we do. And those are stepping stones on our way to our ultimate success. Don't panic, guys. Panic management leads to a lot of bad things for your business. Just organize yourself. You know, you'll have less stress with more progress. So don't panic, organize yourself and understand, just dial into what you need to do, ignore the outside noise. Your results on a daily basis are gonna add up to results being built, which is your business over X period of time. This doesn't happen overnight. And if you get too caught up on any one given day, you're going to neglect to see uh, really what's happening. You know, whether it's a good day or a bad day, you're making progress. And over time, those results are going to come. Your results and your success, you know, comes from a lot of different points from being an entrepreneur. What you have to understand is that once you master, you know, entrepreneurship, once you master building the business, building sales teams, it's not just about you. And, you know, it's not just about our clients. Yes, our clients are important and we are definitely changing their lives. But I'm in a business like this to create a winning environment, create an environment where a big team wins because we're not just trying to change the lives of our clients, we're also trying to change the lives of our partners. It's a longer term game. So you need to understand as a strategic leader, you need to shape the future, you need to understand your vision and you need to be able to articulate your vision to a point where other people buy into your vision. Not about just what's happening next week, next month, next year, but what's happening at the end of this decade? What is your vision for yourself, your business? Where are you trying to take it and get those people to buy into your vision? That's an important part about prospecting for partners. So like I said, guys, we'll continue each and every week to dive into stuff that will help you grow your business, whether you are talking about the beginning stages of gaining traction, the middle stages of gaining some velocity and growth, or their outer stages, which is distribution and scalability.